We're in year one or year two of commercial Bitcoin banking. Okay, we haven't even like what's the date? It's like the early part of August. You know, our first our first Bitcoin acquisition was August 11th or something like that. So we're not even one year into it. And I think when you get to three to five years into the world of Bitcoin banking, the security issues, the regulatory issues, the due diligence issues. Can you show me a Bitcoin bank that's taken a billion dollars of Bitcoin and generated yield consistently for 10 years in a row without any kind of mishap? That no. Sounds, sounds How about like five some... years? How about three years? Sounds like somebody with experience. Right, you've been on both sides, right? So I, I get it. Yeah. Um, so, so the point really is, you're taking a hundred times as much risk, and it's ten times as complicated to get five percent more. So let me turn it around a different way. If I'm going to go ahead, like like I wouldn't take a hundred x more risk, okay, to start with, right? That like as a fiduciary, that doesn't make sense. Let's assume that it wasn't any risk; it was just ten times harder. Well, why would I divert the time of my legal team and my finance team to go jump through 10 times as many compliance, accounting, security, regulatory and process hoops when I have other things I could do at the time? Why don't I just go and raise another billion dollars and buy Bitcoin that's been yielding 120% a year for a decade? Wouldn't it make a lot more sense to leverage up or to acquire more of the thing that's going up 120% a year than it is to divert everybody in order to get it to go up 123% a year with 100 times as much risk and 10 times as much complexity. Is that, so it's a quite, let, let me it. offer a different example. So like, do you want to buy 100,000 acres in Vegas and just own it and you could do it overnight? Or do you want to carefully huddle with 100 architects and plan 150 hotels and the septic systems and all the traffic light systems and all the elevator systems of all the casinos and hotels and restaurants in Vegas. You're the king of analogies. I love it. Yeah, so it's, just, it's <laughs> complicated and risky and distracting yeah. and deluded. But you understand you raised, you raised all your capital with a strategy to invest in a diversified portfolio of securities. And maybe you've got a tighter strategy. Maybe your focus is on the crypto world or the whatever world, right? Well, my strategy is to run an enterprise software company that builds the world's best business intelligence software. And my second strategy is to acquire and hold Bitcoin. And that's the first two paragraphs or the first paragraph of my 10K. If you read it and pull it, that's what it says. Sure. Well, that's a very clear disclosure. If you're investing in MSTR, then that's what you're expecting to get. My job is not to diversify your portfolio to 100 other securities. It's my job is not to hedge the risk. In fact, if you wanted to, if you had $100 million and you wanted 1% exposure to Bitcoin, you might prefer to own MicroStrategy that says we're going to be 3x leverage Bitcoin than own a Bitcoin ETF, which is 1x leverage Bitcoin. And you certainly don't want to take your 1% and invest it in a company run by Yo-Yo Smith that sometimes buys and sometimes sells Bitcoin and hedges it for you, but doesn't tell you what they're going to do and they're not predictable. Because if Bitcoin goes to zero, then you're going to lose your 1%. In which case, if you're 20% exposed, you only got 20% of the upside. If you're 1x exposed, you got the full upside. And if you're 3x exposed, you got 3x the upside. So you understand the number one question is, what exposure am I buying? I'd rather own the company that's got the most exposure. And the second is, do I do I trust them and do I understand their strategy? I don't really want someone that's flaky that's going to change their strategy and blow with the wind because it makes it impossible for me as the portfolio manager to construct my portfolio rationally. If you're in the aluminum business, I want you to do aluminum. And if you're going to be in the timber business, I want you to buy timber. And if you're in the Bitcoin business, I want you to buy Bitcoin. And the one thing I don't want to read is is, well, the company may or may not buy it and they may hedge it if they get worried about it. And, and they, you know, they're not quite sure, right? Because 
I mean, if I wanted an uncertain, you know, security or an uncertain outcome, there's a lot of ways to get an uncertain outcome. I, I, I want to know what I'm buying. That's why you put it up front. And I think from an investor relations point of view, our job is to have a strategy and execute the strategy with clarity and and consistency. And uh, and I think from a securities point of view, that's definitely the safest and most uh, responsible way to go about it, right? If you're if you're unpredictable, you know, that creates complications down the road. I think everybody underestimates the success and the value of Bitcoin and they overestimate everything else. I, I mean, Bitcoin is 10 years old, successful proof of work system. It's not clear to me, like you've only got two things in the blockchain that have been deemed as property or commodity, Bitcoin and Ethereum. There's only two, but there's only one of them that has a consistent strategy for the next decade and a consistent pass for the last decade. And that's Bitcoin, right? So I, I think it's pretty important to understand that, that Bitcoin is pretty much the most uh, predictable thing in the entire blockchain universe. Everything else is uncertain. There's massive technical uncertainty, security uncertainty, legal uncertainty, execution uncertainty. And I think, and so I think people overestimate, right, the, the, certainty or the value of everything else. I think they underestimate the uh, the value of Bitcoin. People ask me if I'm, you know, are you going to diversify? And my point is the most diversified strategy you could take is own all the Bitcoin. Every single time you buy something other than Bitcoin in the blockchain system, <clears throat> you're actually you're actually assuming a whole basket of new risks that you didn't even know you assumed. And you're and you're losing diversification against the traditional conventional economy. You've got five hundred trillion dollars worth of assets in the world. Every bank, every big tech company, every government on earth, every one of them would solve their problems by buying Bitcoin. Buying Bit if Apple, Google, and Facebook build Bitcoin into their application, they improve their business. If El Salvador or Cuba or Turkey or or Japan or Russia or the US or the UK or France buy Bitcoin, they fix their balance sheet. Every company on earth, if they buy Bitcoin, they fix their balance sheet. So Bitcoin is the solution to hundreds of thousands of entities. And if you don't own it, you're not exposed to each of those entities, right? Um, everything else in the world is not. You're not going to buy a random mobile app in order to fix your balance sheet of your turkey. And you're not going to buy another crypto, right? That there isn't, there isn't a proof of work digital property which is stable that you can use to fix your city, fix your state, fix your country, fix your business, fix your technology. So I think people underestimate Bitcoin. I think they overestimate everything else. And, um, it, you know, you're either going to invest in conventional equities and conventional equities have equity risk and they have all sorts of a stack of employment risk, tariff risk, transport risk, execution risk, competitive risk, etc. There's a ton of risk there. And I think that when you get in, into the blockchain area, there's just a huge stack of risk. So I think people typically they underestimate all the risks of not buying Bitcoin and uh, they're underexposed. I, th I think that's what that's the number one thing that I think people don't have right now. They should be more exposed to Bitcoin, less exposed to everything else in the world.